In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at literal equations. Now, literal equations have more than one variable. For example, over here, we can see S is a variable, an unknown, a placeholder, if you will. We also have N, A, and L. And for example, if you're familiar with physics, then this is also basically a literal equation. We have final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, all of these things are variables and they represent a different sort of physical quantity. Now, how do you solve a literal equation? We want to rearrange the variables to isolate a particular variable. So just like you would solve for a variable in a normal algebraic equation, you isolate the variable, you make it the subject of the formula, your teacher might refer to it as that. You do inverse operations, you get it alone on one side of the equation. So for example, in this literal equation, I'm asking you to solve for x. So you need to get x by itself. At the moment, it is being added with y, so plus y. What is the inverse operation of plus y? Minus y. We're going to subtract y on both sides of the equation. Now, obviously, if you subtract by y on the left-hand side of the equation, the plus y and the minus y cancel out, leaving us with x, and then you got z minus y. And that's it. You've completed, you're solving your literal equation. X is the subject of the formula. So you see X is standing alone and X is equal to Z minus Y. Done. What about example two when I ask you to solve for A? Now you need to always consider what is happening to A. A is being multiplied by B. So inverse operations, what's the opposite of multiply by B? Divide by B. So basically you're dividing by B on both sides of the equation. If you divide on the left-hand side by B, they cancel out, leaving me with A. And on the right-hand side, you're going to have essentially, let's just do it properly, C, D divided by B. So both sides of the equation, you're dividing by B. And A is now my subject of my formula. It's standing alone on the one side of the equation. There we go. We solve for A. In one like this, we're building up the level of difficulty. I hope you can see. Here, I need to solve for x. Now, here's x. Now, often in equations, learners struggle or people struggle to determine what they must get rid of first. So, if you think about it like this, what would you first do to x? You would first multiply x by a and then you would add b if you were to do it in a linear fashion. So, if I had to give you a number for x and I had to ask you, okay, if x is 1, work out this expression. Okay, we don't know what A is, we don't know what B is, but you would agree that you first do this and then you add B. Now, when you solve equations, you do it in the opposite order. So this plus B, I'm going to get rid of first, okay, because we're doing it in inverse order. So what's the inverse of adding B? Subtracting B. So we're going to subtract both sides of the equation by B. Remember, I'm also doing it to the left-hand side, but I'm not showing it because plus B minus B leaves me with no B. You can see the Bs disappear. So you subtract by B, and then X is still not by itself. It's being multiplied by A. We need to now divide by A on both sides of the equation. So A divided by A, they go away. You leave, you left with X. Then C minus B over a divided by a yes if you want some of my students asked me can i write it like this c minus b divided by a yes you may it's just very important to put the brackets around the c minus b then if you do it like that but we generally do it in fraction form like this c minus b divided by a and there we go we have solved for x here's another one with quite a few operations 2x minus y divided by 3 equals z now, if you were to pop a number in the place of x, you first multiply it by the 2, then you subtract the y, and then you divide it by 3. So that's how you would do the straightforward operations if I had to give you a number for x. And let's pretend we knew what y was as well. I hope you know what I mean when I say this. We're going to get rid of these three things that is preventing x from being alone, but in the reverse order. So this divide by 3 is going to go first, then the minus y is going to go next, and then the multiply by 2. So we do it in reverse order. So the opposite of divide by 3, on this side we are dividing by 3. What's the inverse operation of divide by 3? Multiply by 3. And yes, you can say z 
multiplied by 3, but we know that we like to put the coefficient in front, 3, z, like that. It's 3 multiplied by z, and you're left with 2x minus y. Then the inverse operation of minusing y, of subtracting y, is adding y. So we add y to both sides of the equation, gets rid of it on the left-hand side. And then last but not least, here we are multiplying by 2. So we need to do the inverse operation of dividing this whole thing over here by 2. And now we've completed our literal equation, we solved for x. Now this one is the most challenging of them all. I ask you to solve for x. As you can see, I've got squared terms. It's equal to zero. I hope your brain is going in the way of quadratic equations. If you don't know quadratic equations, if you want to recap on quadratic equations, I have videos on that. Check out the links in the description box below, but this is a quadratic equation. So your first step when you have a quadratic equation, get it in standard form, make it equal to zero, and then we are going to factorize. So very important, factorize. Now take a look at the side of the equation. How would you factorize that? Can I take out a highest common factor? No, but I can do the difference of two squares method because I have two terms, a minus in between the terms. I have square numbers, so I can square root four. It's a perfect square, it gives me two. And I have even exponents. So this can be squared and this can be squared. Difference of two squares. And as you should remember, when you do difference of two squares, you have two brackets plus in the one, minus in the other. If I square this, so if I square root rather, if I square root that, the square root of four is two and the square root of x squared is x. That goes in front of the signs in the bracket here because it's the first term over here. Then in the same way, we square root y squared. Remember if you square root, a square, basically it's inside divided by outside, so it's this. It's y to the power of 1. You all know that, I hope. And if you ever want to check if you factorize correctly, remember all you need to do is just distribute. Do this times this, see if it gets you that, and so on. We have, now remember our goal, we are trying to solve for x. How would you normally solve a quadratic equation? We would take each piece or each bracket and make it equal to zero. There's going to be two solutions here because it's a quadratic equation. So we take each bracket. So we're going to go 2x plus y equals zero. Or there's two solutions, which is why we say or 2x minus y equals zero. So remember the goal. We are solving for x. So we want to get x by itself on both little in both little equations. To get x by itself, we need to do the inverse operations. So we need to take plus y. We need to do the opposite, which is minus y. So you're going to go 0 minus y, which is negative y. Okay, so this is negative y. And then 2x is over here. x is still not by itself. It's being multiplied by 2. So inverse operations, divide by 2. And you do the same thing on this side. This is subtracting y, we need to add y to both sides of the equation. So 0 plus y is y. You're left with 2x over here. Then we are multiplying by 2, so we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get the x alone. And there we go. We have solved for x. In the next video, I will be doing some past paper questions for literal equations. I'll see you there. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.